Dear all, welcome to the Unit for Learning School. Um, everyone is muted and the questions can be taken after presentation. I will now give the floor to Alexander. Thanks very much, uh, Enya. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Q4 2023 earnings call. My name is uh, Alexander Severis. I'm the CEO of Euronav, and I'm joined by my brother Ludovic Severis, our CFO, and I will immediately hand the word to him. Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and thank you for dialing in on our Q4 uh, earnings call. Um, we'll uh, Go through the presentation of uh, the Q4 results, uh, focusing on the financial highlights first, and then Alexander will take over on the corporate developments and the tanker markets. Um, we're uh, extremely pleased to say that uh, we've had our uh, record uh, Q4 uh, in the history of the company. Uh, since 1997, um, we have been able uh, to deliver a profit for this quarter of uh, $411 million. Uh, um, obviously, that result has been uh, skewed uh, by uh, capital gains out of uh, the sales of part of the frontline fleet of um, $323 million. Nevertheless, the underlying profit of $88 million um, puts forward a strong Q4 based on the uh, robust freight markets. Um, we're happy also to uh, include that in Q4, we've continued our fleet expansion uh, within Euronav um, with uh, another two VLCCs, which uh, today uh, still puts us with an order book of four VLCCs on order and four Suez Maxes. Um, uh, on the right hand side of the slide, you can see that the Q4 results uh, were far above our PL break evens. But also that the Q1 um, uh, guidance uh, is going in the right direction. Alexander will continue uh, on that. We fixed uh, for Q1 46% at 50,430 dollars uh, per day for the VLCCs, and on the Suez Maxes we have 54% uh, fixed at 55,000 uh, dollars. If you look uh, on the next slide. Um, we are highlighting, obviously, the key metrics uh, of, uh, of our company. We still have a, a, a leverage on a book equity of about 30%. Obviously, with the uh, sale of um, uh, most of the VLCCs to Frontline, um, we have uh, strengthened our liquidity dramatically. Uh, end of year, we ended the year with $1.243 billion in liquidity. Uh, as of today, as most of the vessels uh, of uh, the sale to Frontline have been delivered, we are close to $2.5 billion in liquidity. Um, the net profits of $411 million I've mentioned. Uh, happy also to include that for the full year, we are at a $862 million profit, uh, from which $490 million is coming from the business and three hundred seventy-two million from capital gains. Q4 has also been highlighted by uh, a new chapter for Euronav, uh, which Alexander will uh, continue to explain. Um, we have decided not to uh, do a dividend for Q4 uh, until the mandatory uh, offer is over. Uh, many of the uh, stakeholders within Euronav, investors, analysts and others, have uh, asked us in the last couple of weeks uh, what the dividend policy would be for the company. Um, Previous management uh, and Euronav as a standalone pure play tanker company um, has uh, aimed to dividend out 80% of its net profits going forward. And if the transaction with CMB Tech uh, will be um, consumed uh, next week, um, uh, the board of directors has decided that the dividend policy will be a full discretionary one. I think uh, CMB as an anchor shareholder has a track record of rewarding its shareholders, uh, but in terms to give clarity to our investors, uh, the board of directors will keep a full discretion on how many dividends will be paid based on uh, the profits. The further growth, um, we were happy to include in the Q4 uh, two new long-term charters uh, to uh, our first tier client Valero uh, and expand our order book. As of today, uh, within Euronav, we have a remaining capex of $700 million throughout the four VLCCs on order and the four Suez Maxes. Um, again, highlighting the facts which we mentioned in the Capital Markets Day, 
uh, if the transaction with CMB Tech would be uh, approved uh, next week, um, CMB Tech has an outstanding capital commitment to new buildings of $2 billion, which would bring the total CapEx commitment of $2.7 billion. Um, one metric we haven't highlighted and uh, we hope to be able to grow further in the future is the contract backlog on our marine division. Um, today stands at a $1.75 billion revenue. Um, as uh, CMB and Euronav have stated, uh, it is our intention to continue to find attractive opportunities to be able to um, lock in long-term cash flow. Without further ado, I'll pass on the word to Alex on the corporate development. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Ludovic. Um, well, on the corporate developments, uh, a lot has already been said over the last couple of weeks. Um, I think if we zoom in on uh, the frontline transaction, I think the first thing we can highlight today is that uh, 23 out of the 24 uh, VLCCs have already been uh, delivered uh, to frontline. Uh, you have seen in the Q4 uh, what uh, the result impact is, and we've also projected the impact of the sale of the 24 vessels or the remaining 24 uh, vessels uh, in Q1. So one vessel still needs to be delivered, but we're expecting that to be within uh, Q1. Um, we have also sold the Oceania, our oldest uh, ship in the fleet. Uh, this has also been announced uh, today, and we're going to realize a capital gain of close to $35 uh, million, which will be recorded in Q1 uh, 2024. Ludovic already said, very important contract done uh, with Valero uh, on a long-term time charter on two new Suez Maxes for delivery in Q2 2026. And then our total order book, uh, part of our optimization strategy, fleet renewal strategy of uh, VLCCs uh, at Beihai Shipyard in Qingdao is now four vessels, three of them which will deliver in 2026 and one which will deliver in uh, 2027. So if you look at our total fleet, uh, apart from the two FSOs that we have, we have 17 Vs uh, on the water plus four uh, new buildings and 22 Suez Maxes uh, on the water. We have the, the Bristol uh, delivering very soon plus another four uh, on order, which are going to come in uh, 2024 and 2026. We'll go to the next slide. We cannot uh, have this call without mentioning uh, the Red Sea. Uh, as you have heard, we were one of the very first companies uh, to avoid the area after uh, the Houthi rebel attacks on uh, merchant shipping. Uh, we have not changed our viewpoint uh, so far, so we will continue until further notice uh, to go and choose uh, other routes than uh, through the Red Sea until that situation has become safer uh, for our crew and for our ships. The impact of the diversions can be seen every day uh, in shipping in general, and I would say crude oil and product uh, tanker shipping in specific. Uh, it is indeed uh, creating more demand for ships because of the longer uh, ton miles. Uh, and we're expecting the situation, uh, unfortunately, to last at least for the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, hoping for this to be resolved in the following months. You can go to the next slide. Uh, making a little recap, uh, what we already did on the Capital Markets Day uh, presentation of what has happened over the past months and what will happen in the next couple of weeks. Uh, on the 9th of October, we struck an agreement uh, with the Fredrickson Group uh, to get out of the deadlock uh, for Euronav. That uh, deal, that agreement was ratified in November at a special uh, general meeting of shareholders. Just before Christmas, we announced uh, the CMB Tech transaction. And uh, next week on Wednesday, uh, we will have a special general meeting to vote uh, on that specific transaction. Uh, shortly thereafter, we hope to open the mandatory bid uh, for Euronav mm -hmm. and we hope to close it uh, by the middle of March. I want to say a few words about uh, the tanker markets as well. Um, as uh, we are in shipping, there's things we know and things we don't know. Uh, if we zoom in on the supply side uh, and the fleet composition, which are things uh, that should be relatively certain, I can only say that the signals are still very positive. Uh, if we look at the order book to fleet, uh, even though there has been some recent increase in ordering activity specifically for Suez Maxis and some VLCC, we are still at uh, very low uh, order book to fleet ratios from a historical point of view. And this definitely for the next two years will be very supportive uh, for our industry. Zooming in on the age of the vessels, uh, stating the obvious uh, with a fleet that is hardly getting scrapped, uh, the age profile of the vessels uh, is increasing, is going up. 
and we are now looking at uh, ages, uh, average ages of the fleet that we haven't seen for a very, very long time. Again, uh, should be a very positive signal uh, going forward. Uh, we have one more slide, uh, the next slide, uh, that uh, zooms in on the VLCC fleet age profile and order book. Basically, you can see there that uh, a big chunk of the vessels is going to reach the age of 20 years uh, in the following years, uh, which means a lot of potential to scrap. Uh, which means that uh, utilization definitely has some support, uh, even if demand, and we'll speak about demand in a second, uh, would stay relatively flat. So only positive uh, things to say about the supply side. Um, going into the asset prices, um, the market reacts uh, as it does uh, when the supply demand balance is tight. Uh, we are seeing uh, very, very healthy secondhand prices for both Suez Maxis and VLCCs. If we have to say uh, something negative, I would say that the VLCC uh, second-hand market has not uh, gone up uh, as the underlying sentiment would have it. It's been underwhelming a little bit, uh, but we're expecting this to catch up as the year proceeds uh, if the fundamentals stay as they are. On the next slide, uh, we have a few uh, graphs on demand. Again, uh, even though demand is growing slowly, it's the supply-demand balance which is still looking very, very healthy. It's well publicized. Uh, the only new VLCC of the year has already been delivered. So there are no more Vs coming uh, in 2024. And you can see on the slide that the order book for 2025 uh, is indeed uh, very low or non-existent. Uh, with a slight growth in demand in oil, this should tighten the balance of supply demand uh, further. So I'm already at my concluding remarks before we go and uh, take some uh, questions. Obviously, uh, for Ludovic and I, uh, this is a uh, Euronav uh, Q4 earnings call, uh, maybe the last one as a pure play. If uh, the transaction of CMB Tech uh, on Wednesday is uh, ratified, is, is agreed uh, by the shareholders, then obviously uh, the next earnings call will zoom in a lot more on all the different divisions uh, that we will have uh, added. But for now, uh, we are open for questions. Dear all, if you would like to ask a question, uh, please uh, raise the hand and I will uh, tell you your name and tell you to unmute when you can ask your question. So the first person who can ask a question is uh, Christophe Samoa. Um, you may unmute and ask your question, please. Hello, um, good afternoon, um, um, Alexandra and Ludovic. Uh, a few questions, um, if I may. Uh, the upcoming SGM, um, the approval of the acquisition, is that by a simple majority vote that it needs to be approved, or do we need a qualified majority? Um, and then secondly, um, best case scenario, when, when would we see the first consolidation of CMB Tech if the transaction is approved? Um, and then, <clears throat> secondly, um, regarding the sale of VLCCs um, to Frontline, um, the delivery is spread in fourth quarter and first quarter. Um, can you give more detail on um, how this impacts the cash flow statement in the fourth quarter and the first quarter? How many sale of vessels in the fourth quarter in your cash flow statement and uh, how much repayment of borrowings you foresee? linked to these sales in the first quarter and uh, fourth quarter of last year. Um, and then third question, if I may, on Tankers International. Um, the, 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 the VLCC vessels uh, which have been sold to Frontline are no longer part of the pool. How, how do you see this um, for Tankers International? What's the impact there? Um, and yeah. How do you see the position of Euronef in, in Tankers International uh, going forward? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Christoph. I'll take the last question and then I'll hand over to Ludovic. So on TI, uh, as we've stated before, uh, as far as we're concerned, is business as usual. As you know, we're a 50-50 uh, shareholder together with INSW. Uh, the fleet has obviously reduced. Uh, but operations uh, are still going uh, as they were before. And actually, uh, in recent weeks and months, uh, we've even added uh, new vessels to the pool from uh, other third-party owners. Uh, for the other questions, I'll hand over to Ludovic. Yeah, great. Christoph, uh, thanks for the questions. On the SGM next week, it's simple majority, uh, i.e. Uh, CMB can vote as well. Uh, so hence, there's a high likelihood that the transaction will uh, uh, go through. 
on the consolidation of CME Tech, um, we have uh, the simple answer is that you will see that in the Q1 figures, uh, which obviously will be announced in May, we have put an illustrative balance sheet in the Capital Markets Day, uh, where the main um, point to be pointed out is that uh, we do not take any goodwill, i.e. the vessels and uh, on the water in CMB Tech will be passed on at book value uh, in uh, Euronav. But so you will see a full uh, consolidation in the Q1 set of results. On the sale of the VLCCs, um, 11 VLCCs have been sold to Frontline in Q4 with a capital gain of $323 million. 13 VLCCs uh, will be sold to Frontline, i.e. 12 have been sold in Q1, and one is being uh, will be sold uh, around mid-March, with a total capital gain of um, $372 million for Q1. The total um, sales amount was $2 billion, $350 million. Um, the exact uh, detail on the net, the, the full proceeds, in Q1, Q4, uh, there, uh, I have to come back to you uh, on that. Uh, if you just take an uh, arithmetic average on uh, uh, 11 or 24 vessels, it will be around 1.1 billion in Q4 and then 1.25 in Q1. There was no debt on the ships while being delivered to Frontline. That is because uh, within UNAV, we have refinanced all the remaining fleet that still remains today in our ownership, in the, we've re-leveraged those vessels to 55% of fair market value, and we've used the excess cash of that to take out the debt on the vessels uh, being sold to Frontline, which means that the 2.35 billion came in as net cash proceeds. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Then the next uh, person who can ask uh, his question is uh, Thijs Berkelder. You can unmute and ask your question, please. Yeah, Thijs Berkelder, Even Emro, Older BHF. Uh, three questions. Uh, first, you presented a break even PL break even for your, for your tankers. Is that a pre sale of the fleet or post sale of the fleet or somewhere in between? Uh, then second question is, uh, uh, given the situation with the Houthis, etc., uh, are you making extra costs for protecting your vessels now? Uh, and if so, uh, what amounts should we think of? Uh, and third question is on the, uh, the bunker volumes. Uh, uh, what is your bunker strategy going forward? Okay, Tess, thanks. Um, I'll take the first one, I'll take the next two ones. The break even of the tanker as protected as the projected are of the remaining fleet. So this is, you know, going forward, these are the PL break evens on both Suez Maxes and VLCCs. Yep, yeah, and then um, on the protective measures uh, for the Houthis, uh, we don't need to take any measures because the best measure is not going there. Uh, we are uh, basically sailing around uh, and not uh, crossing the area. Um, in terms of the bunker strategy, Thais, uh, we uh, are basically keeping a, a strategy of being full floating, uh, so market related. Uh, there's not uh, any significant hedging uh, and uh, we are not doing anything that maybe was done in the past of uh, buying bunkers beforehand and, and loading it on board of uh, the Oceania because now the vessel is gone. Uh, so we basically go back to uh, uh, the normal strategy uh, uh, of uh, staying on the spot market and not taking any cover. Does that answer your question, Thais? Yes, thank you. Thank you. M maybe, Anya, before we go back to uh, the question of Christophe, uh, it is what I thought is $1.1 billion in cash came in in Q4 and 1.25 in Q1. You can go ahead, Anya. If uh, there is anyone who still has a question, you can now raise your hand, please. 
Okay, I see uh, no further questions, uh, Alexander and Ludovic. All right, great. Uh, but we're always uh, there to answer any questions you might have after this call. Uh, thanks for joining us and uh, see you next week on Wednesday at the General Assembly. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye.